Hello! This is a short video about my experiments in metrology. I am quite interested in this field of precision measurements, so I acquired some equipment over the years, some of which I bought broken and fixed myself. Not quite a metrology grade equipment according to modern standards, but I am doing this uh, as a hobby on a low budget. Uh, this is my Datron uh, 1071, seven and a half digit multimeter, which I bought broken and fixed myself. There are several videos about that. Uh, this is my Fluke uh, voltage calibrator, model 341A, which I also bought broken and fixed myself. There is a video about that. And this is another calibrator, voltage and current. EDC 520A, which I also bought broken and fixed, and there is a video about that as well. This is my precision uh, thermometer I have just built. My latest video is about that project, and as you can see it is still on a breadboard. Uh, this is my Hewlett Packard 34401A, a six and a half digit multimeter. And this is my recent addition to the lab, Agilent 3499B, a switch control unit with a 10 channel multiplexer card installed. So I can switch up to 10 two wire inputs uh, to one output. Uh, currently, this output is connected to both meters. I'm using rear terminals of this meter. Uh, channel 0 is connected to the ADC calibrator and channel 1 is connected to the Fluke calibrator and channel 1 is manually selected right now. This can be controlled over GPIB interface but it is not used at the moment. I am preparing this setup so that I can measure several voltage references for example at the same time. Unfortunately, the equipment is not calibrated. The best thing I have done is uh, I compared some time ago this meter with the newer model, which is a 34461A. And that meter had a certificate of calibration from Keysight. So I am reasonably sure that most probably this meter is within specifications. And that run is supposed to be a better meter, but uh, unfortunately I bought it broken and all calibration parameters were lost. So I calibrated it according to this meter. So hopefully it has accuracy of this meter, but what about stability? That's what I'm trying to find out by running this experiment. I am measuring 10 volts from the Fluke calibrator by both meters and uh, logging that on my computer together with the temperature. Let's have a look. Here is the data I have so far. The experiment is running for slightly more than 80 hours already. This is the voltage. The blue line is Datron. The green line is Hewlett Packard. And this is the ambient temperature. Uh, today was a hot day. The temperature here in the lab reached slightly more than 35 degrees C. And clearly we have negative temperature coefficient in this system, meaning that um, when the temperature goes up, the voltage goes down. And let's see by how much. Uh, the lowest points here are this and this. Uh, 26 degrees and uh, let's call this highest point 35 degrees so the difference is 9 degrees and the uh, corresponding um, uh, highest point is here um, so measured by Datron it is about 16 ppm above 10 volts and the lowest point is here, let's call it 5 ppm above 10 volts. So the difference is 11 ppm over 9 degrees. Uh, 
this gives us slightly more than 1 ppm per degree C, which is not bad at all. And according to the Hewlett-Packard meter, the highest point was here, let's call it 18 ppm, and the lowest point is here, which is uh, around 10 volts or 0 ppm, so the difference is 18 ppm over 9 degrees, and this means um, something around 2 ppm per degree which is also not bad at all, however, this is mixed with the drift of the fluke calibrator and we don't know uh, what fluke calibrator contributes to this. The worst case might be that fluke drifts horribly in one direction, meters drift horribly in another direction and uh, combined together that compensates each other to some extent and this is the difference, which looks not bad at all, but uh, what are the true drifts, we don't know. And uh, to try resolving this problem, I'm thinking about building myself a better voltage reference. And here is what I'm getting myself into. I just ordered three boards, which was the minimum order, for voltage reference based on LTZ1000 chip. And this is just a start of an endless pursuit of perfection. So I'm at serious risk of spending a lot of money and becoming a volt nut in the process. I have already ordered uh, parts for one board. These are expensive parts, certainly more than $100 to build just one board. And uh, this reference, if done properly, should be so stable that compared to the graph we have seen, this should produce a straight line, given a good voltmeter as well, of course. So this is going to be a topic of one of my future videos, and I also have a lot of repair projects waiting. So if you are interested in this sort of stuff, be sure to give thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching. Bye!